On today's show, David interviews Randy Ziegenfuss and Lynn Fweeney Hetton of the Salisbury School District from Allentown, Pennsylvania. There'll be a East Initiative update and more up next on the EduTech Guys. EduTech Guys Radio, radio radio.edutechguys.com. The opinions expressed on this site and this program for those of participants are not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any specific educational entity, sponsor, company, state, or government agency. Hello and welcome to EduTech Guys Radio. How you doing out there? I'm David Henderson. Hey, and I'm Jeff Madlock. Awesome. Welcome to the show, man. I'll tell you what, things are just rolling here. We're, we here in Arkansas are uh, in the thick of the beginning of the school year. The that makes thick. sense. Yeah, I don't know if that thick. makes sense. The thing is, I guess. You know, we're, we're right in the middle. Uh, the school year started a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and so we're in the middle of that beginning. It's Things are starting to move, churn, mm. you know. I liked your thick reference better because it's like thick quicksand up to my neck. <laughs> Sink, sinking fast. Yeah. It's not moving. It's just I'm moving I'm moving downwards as it's moving up over my air portals. <laughs> what are you sinking about? <laughs> Hey, listen, check us out on the web, www.edutechguys.com. Heck, just go to Google, type us in, and yes, you're going to find the Edutech Guys peering back at you from our emoji. Our, our beady little eyed emoji characters. <laughs> <laughs> One day we're going to shoot new. That was actually, those are actually not emojis. That's an actual photograph of David and I. Yes, we're so old that we're cartoon characters. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Hey, I did want to share something, though, before we get too far down the line. Okay. So at the Education Service Center where I'm working, we're trying uh, a brand new thing uh, with the GT students in uh, middle schools in our service area, and it is what we're calling a vlog competition. And so we're going around, uh, I, I say we, most of it's the GT coordinator. Um, his name is Chad. He's going around and visiting with the GT classes in our service area. Uh, mostly it's, I think, a fifth through eighth grade at this point. And um, talking to them about, uh, they're going to be, they're allowed to choose one of four topics. They, and they have to create a video response on those topics. They have to do the research. They got to produce the video. They got to script it out, all that kind of stuff. And then they submit the videos along with all of their research and everything else is part of a local competition and then the uh, winning uh, GT team will get a trophy and some other or whatever other prizes we can come up with so uh, it's gonna be really cool I'm involved with that uh, I'm helping out uh, putting together in fact one of the things I'll be doing this weekend as we're recording this uh, I'm going to be putting together kind of the instructional video that goes over kind of the rules and what we're looking for and that kind of stuff and so it's going to be really cool it's going to be fun that's awesome hey just visit the website swaec.org and you can find out more yeah. and reach out to the GT coordinator Chad Morris there yeah and we're, we're making this up as we go. As far as we can tell, there's not been – now, there have been student video contests, but nothing that specifically aims more at the kind of vlog format. So, I don't know, we, we might be breaking new ground or sinking deeper into the quicksand. Well, that's what we do in education. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> if you guys need any help with sinking, just holler at me. <laughs> You're becoming an old pro. Oh, I'm writing a manual on it. <laughs> the manual of sinking. Actually, this is manual version 28-4. <laughs> So, you know, I've been doing it for years. Yes. The sinking feeling of education. Wow, hey, that's uplifting. Now, boy, Jeff sounds happy today, <laughs> yeah, doesn't he? I was going to say, and this is why David did the interview by himself. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's not. So, um, <laughs> no, really, I'm in a good mood. It's just uh, this year's been really hard on me. This this is a... Uh, you've been, you've had a crazy it's beginning. It's just crazy, a beginning of school. We've yeah. just been really busy, and that's all it is. So, yeah, yeah it'll, it's, it'll, all, it's all good. It'll man. level out. That's right, man. Or the medication will help it let out. No. <laughs> As they say. No, I'm just kidding. Either way, man. I take my baby aspirin. Anyway, so listen, we're going to drop out to a... Is there a recall a, on that? Is there? Great. That's probably what Children's Advil, I think. Right I don't now. know. The bottom of it says 1979. It can't be that bad. It can't be that bad. <laughs> baby aspirin. And it just pez. I mean... I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forget what movie that is. And they give him a peer in that tablet. What are you doing giving him drugs? No, it's just an aspirin with the A and the S scraped off. <laughs> it's a peer in tablet. That's what nice. I need. Awesome. Hey, we're going to drop out to a quick commercial, and we'll be right back with David's interview after this. Are you an educator, an administrator, work in the education technology field? 
reach out to us at EduTechGuys on Twitter or go to EduTechGuys.com and fill out the form to be a guest on an upcoming show. We'd love to hear your story and share it with the world. EduTechGuys.com Hey, welcome back to the show. We are very excited to have our next guests here with us, and we're going to let them introduce themselves and talk a little bit about uh, where they're from, what they do, and then uh, let's just have a conversation about what's going on this year. So welcome to the show. Uh, good morning. It is morning here. Actually, no, it's afternoon. Uh, my name's <laughs> Randy Zig- I'm superintendent in uh, Salisbury Township School District, which is on the East Coast in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And I'm Lynn Cuny Hatton, um, Randy's colleague and uh, in action. I'm the assistant superintendent in the district. Awesome, man. That's very cool. So have you guys, um, have you officially started yet? I don't know what your first day of school is out there. So our teachers came in last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had our opening convocation where we gather everybody together. And uh, our students came in starting yesterday on Monday. So we're right at the very beginning. Yeah, I was going to say, in, wow. <laughs> here, here in the East. Uh, now, your, your school probably started uh, weeks ago, probably. I'm yeah, uh, yeah. schools in Arkansas started back um, on August like 13th-ish, somewhere in there. So, yeah, so uh, they've been back for a couple of weeks now. But, uh, man, I, I appreciate the fact that the day after school started, you guys are joining us for this conversation. That's uh, I really do. I appreciate you taking time out. I'm sure you've got lots of stuff, lots of plates spinning in the air at this point. It's, it's our pleasure. And, and really, today, the heavy lifting is being done with our building and school leaders. Yeah, that's good. It's, it's awesome that you have the people in place that can help you know, take care of those daily tasks while you're able to man the ship from, you know, from, from up above. So that's awesome. (laughs) Very cool. So, um, one of the things I know that, uh, you guys are, uh, are doing are you're firing up a couple of new podcasts. Yeah. Well, new seasons, new seasons of podcasts. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we have two podcasts. One is called TL talk radio. And that's available at tltalkradio.org. And this is actually our fifth year. Oh, wow. Well, congratulations. And uh, the second podcast, which we've been doing probably for like 18 months now, is called Shift Your Paradigm. Mm. That's at shiftyourparadigm.org. And maybe Lynn can share a little bit about what we've done on those podcasts and sort of where we're going. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm curious to know what the focus is of each one and then um, – at some point, I'd kind of like to talk about what it's like to try to run two podcasts. You know, we, we do one, and I, I don't know how we manage to keep up with the one. So I can imagine being over two of them. So talk about each of those and, you know, what their focuses are and that kind of stuff. Sure. So I'll start with TL Talk Radio. Um, we started this one, as Randy said, this is our fifth season for TL Talk Radio. We just uh, recorded episode one a week or, or so ago um, for season five. And really, TL Talk Radio emerged organically as a way to share what we were doing in our practice, Mm. Um, using it as a a way to reflect on our practice and to share some of the um, projects and tasks and sort of leadership actions that we had been taking with our own team. And then it evolved to be a real opportunity for us to learn through conversations with authors and other experts um, through some collaborative sort of joint effort conversations about topics related to innovation, um, connected directly to some of the professional learning we were doing in our district. Uh, we used it as sort of an, an action research, really to understand what were the uncommon innovations that were happening in education, and talked with a lot of authors about topics at the time related to um, agency and genius hour and mm-hmm. makerspace, some of those topics to really get a good understanding of what's possible for the future. Now that was a few years ago, so um, probably less timely now in terms of future thinking, but looking forward to what's next. We've also done um, conversations related to some legal issues. Oh yeah. Uh, Last year in season four, we added some really interesting conversations for school leaders and district leaders about um, specific slices of the law and how they affect our learners and our leadership practices. So yeah. Real Talk Radio has been you know, conversations about our practice, conversations with experts to help us better understand what's possible in, in our classrooms, um, 
everywhere from authors to other practitioners to even the lawyers that we've had some great conversations with. Well, uh, you know, and, and that's the, the law side of especially, you know, we, our focus is generally um, education technology. And so like you, I don't know why it just seems maybe maybe the last year was the year for lawyers on podcasts. I don't know. But but we were in a similar situation where, you know, well, we've we've been discussing those kinds of things, how the different uh, how the different laws affect like inclusion, technology, accessibility, you know, those types of things from the technology side. So I would imagine that the conversations you're having, A, include some of that, but also, you know, because you're at the district level and, and you're reaching a far broader audience, that those conversations must be uh, potentially intense, <laughs> you know, having those conversations with the lawyers about school law. Yeah, I, I think a great example of that in season four, we had a conversation with Aaron Gilsbach. Um, about the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. Mm -hmm. So really helping leaders understand what are our, what are our rights and what are our responsibilities um, for our learners and, and their parents. So that's just an example of how we're sort of crossing the, the technology, leadership, and, and law yeah. classes. Yeah, Another that's example awesome. that sticks out in my mind that had the, the, the tech focus was uh, uh, interviewing Aaron again, who's the attorney, and uh, Cesar Bocanegra from uh, DonorsChoose.org, which is probably something that uh, many classroom teachers are using. But the, the sort of legal implications behind, you know, putting out a request, getting the funding, getting the uh, your request fulfilled with is obviously some sort of product or item like who owns that and should you have a policy around that? So, you know, our audience being mostly school leaders, you know, focusing on that angle. So as a school leader, what do I need to know about the law and about policy around using these sort of crowdfunding sources? Um, we also did um, some episodes on special education uh, and not necessarily tech focused, but, um, you know, looking at it from that leadership perspective, what are some of the things related to law that school leaders need to know? Sure, absolutely. Things that um, we are going to focus on this year, uh, we might do a couple of legal episodes again too, um, but we want to look at school finance. Hmm. Uh, so we're looking forward to booking a couple of podcasts, uh, probably more than a couple, um, mm -hmm. around uh, those kinds of school issues uh, around of school funding mm -hmm. that's uh you know a struggle that many of us deal with from the the school to the district level sure well. absolutely yeah i mean uh, you know funding's a huge part of you know like it or not good bad or ugly you know funding and the financing uh you know getting your uh your your adms you know getting all of that in order in order to figure out what my budget's going to be and, and, and how can I spend certain money depending on the funding source and or the funding recipient in terms of either, you know, something that's being used in the classroom or whether it's tech or whether it's, you know, resource materials, whatever that happens to be. I mean, that's, that's huge. Yeah. And, and these podcasts have really been a vehicle for us to learn, which takes us into a nice segue to the other podcast, which is shiftyourparadigm.org. So this, this podcast started probably 18 months ago. Um, don't count the exact number of months, but about a year now. Um, we were inspired by um, some of the work at Education Reimagined mm -hmm. and their focus on uh, moving from school-centered paradigm, the traditional dominant way that we think about school, to a more learner-centered paradigm, starting with the learner and then designing the educational program around that. So we were inspired by some of their resources, but then also looking at what Lynn mentioned earlier, our own practice and questioning, okay, so if we wanna move our organization to learner-centered, what do we need to do differently as leaders? Sure. You know, sure. We, went to, we went to graduate school to learn how to you know, lead in a certain paradigm, a certain way of thinking, and, and as this way of thinking moves more towards learner center. What do we need to do differently? So uh, we brainstormed and thought, okay, well, let's learn ourselves. So we'll start another podcast, uh, call it Shift Your Paradigm, and we're going to connect with school leaders from all across the country that are actually doing this work. Uh, school leaders as well as learners. So um, if your listeners want to go to that shiftyourparadigm.org website, what you'll see there um, are 30 to 45 minute conversations with various kinds of schools from public schools to private schools 
to charter schools, small, rural, so urban, suburban, all sorts of um, demographics uh, who are doing this work. And um, we talk about the challenges and we uh, and the successes as well. And we've taken that and, you know, helped that guide our own practice and shared that in our own community here uh, and have had many teachers and leaders listen to those podcasts and learn from them as well. So, you know, basically for us, podcasting is a little selfish. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to grow and learn. It's our own professional learning, but it also provides resources for those out there who are doing the same kind of work uh, and easy access to that material as well. Well, I actually love the idea that, that you are learning, um, from other folks that have done it. And in the process, you're sharing that learning with other folks. Um, I don't know, to me, uh, it, I'm, I'm trying to think how to, uh, let me just, uh, let me digress just a little bit. Um, one of the things that I do is an aside project. Um, I say it's an aside, it eats up a chunk of time, but I, 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 do, I, do, I do YouTube videos, okay? So one of the series that I'm in the middle of doing for YouTube, which I know is funny, we were talking before we started about how, you know, I have a face for radio, yet I put my face on YouTube nearly every day. I, I don't know. The, the space between my ears is a very weird place. So uh, anyway, um, but one of the series that I'm doing is I am learning how to um, create environments for a particular game from someone else who already does it. And that's what, that's, what's being recorded. I'm sharing my learning experience. And so I relate directly to what you're talking about in shifting your paradigm because you went in not, I mean, yes, you had an idea of what you wanted to do, but not exactly how to do it. And, and maybe the idea of what in air quotes, what you wanted to do has possibly shifted as well as you have learned things. And so I, I just, I think that's, it's a wonderful way to reach folks and say, Hey, we want to help you shift your paradigm we're in the process of shifting our paradigm, but we're learning from these other folks who, you know, they've been doing it for a while. So come learn with us, make our mistakes, share our failures, share our successes. I think it's awesome. That's very cool. And it's, it's really allowing us to understand what's possible because in addition to actually doing the podcast, after each podcast, we create a reflective blog post where oh. we're you know, summarizing the podcast for our listeners who might who might want to read it or reread it. And then we also add some of our key takeaways, what we think were, were important ideas and some connections to our practice um, with the hope of modeling for others to make connections to their practice. And also, um, in addition to making connections, we identify some questions that we have that we might want to process with our team, that we might want to investigate through additional podcasts. Um, and also identify some next steps. So in addition to doing the podcast, we're also doing some of the behind the scenes work or some practical application of what we're learning through reflective writing, um, identifying connections to our practice, identifying those questions, and also really thinking about some intentional next steps so that we can leverage what we learn to help move our, our district forward. Yeah, absolutely. So in those blog posts, um, are they open for the general public to be able to post their own questions, comments, whatever to your posts? Yes, absolutely. Yep. So have you, and, and I, this is why I'm asking cause I don't know. Um, so have you received certain questions, comments, whatever that you've then turned around and either asked in a future podcast or addressed in an, you know, in a later podcast as part of that, like building the online community, have you been able to incorporate that yet? Or that's something you're still, working on? Well, it's definitely a work in progress. Mm -hmm. um, as we went through the episodes, uh, we've recorded um, bonus episodes where we get yeah. like a panel of people together, um, people who will listen to the podcast or have particular expertise in learner centered. And we sort of dissect and come up with themes and ways to advance the work. And we put that into a bonus episode. So, you know, that's one way that we're engaging the community and Education Reimagine has really partnered with us and mm. has made help us make connections to these folks because there, are, um, many of these schools are also involved uh, in the learner centered, the more formal learner centered movement through Education Reimagine, and Education Reimagine has also started transcribing a number of the podcasts. So we haven't posted those yet, but um, in the very near future, uh, our your listeners and our listeners can start to see some of those. Um, transcripts up there because you know you know some people like to access the through different media the text can be easily more scannable 
as opposed to an audio file. But if you're in your car and you're sort of captive and you can't read text, maybe the <laughs> or shouldn't be reading the text. <laughs> audio file might be more appropriate. So, um, you know, I I think too we we would love to have a bigger community. We also realize that this isn't the dominant conversation yet. Sure, uh, definitely building momentum. Um, you hear more and more conversations around personalized learning, competency learning, more learner agency, um, internships, open world learning. The conversation is definitely deepening and widening. Uh, and we hope that as that happens, more people can learn from the work that uh, is being shared there. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we certainly invite any of your listeners to reach out if they would um, if you'd like to post a comment or, or share a message. Uh, we certainly would love to have some more engagement with some of our listeners. Um, or even if they'd want to talk about some of the episodes on a bonus panel, it's great to have different perspectives. And we really value uh, the perspectives across the country. Yeah, that's very cool. I, I think that is a great idea. I love that. I'm, I'm just going to tell you straight up, we, we may steal that idea. <laughs> I, I really do. I think that's great. But that's the beauty of networking. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so if you, as you are learning about shifting the paradigm in your own district, um, do you have maybe one or two things that have really, you know, kind of in the last 18 months really popped out and said, okay, yes, this is, this is the direction we want to go. And you've already implemented that or you're, you're far enough along where you're close to implementing that? Or are you still in the very much information gathering stage? I would say we're definitely in the nascent stage of just sort of building something. Sure. Uh, three years ago, we developed a profile of a graduate and we had more intentional conversations about what we believe about learning. The last two years, we've started to develop pockets of teachers who are willing to experiment and try new things out in their classroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, this year we're looking to sort of scale that up by involving everybody. Yeah. Um, we're in a small school district of 1600 students, about 140 teachers. And um, so that's our, that's our big push this year is to scale this up. Um, but in answer to your question, I think one of the things that um, I'll speak for myself that, that I've learned through this process is really um, the whole core of what learner centered it is, and that is starting with the learner, but this idea of learner agency mm. and that there's such power in the voices of our students. And if we can just turn over some control, um, which is hard because that's the old paradigm. Right. It's right. Control. And um, going to the pioneer lab uh, at education reimagined this summer and hearing uh, some of the learners specifically talking about their experiences um, hearing our own learners here through our superintendent uh, student advisory council, through the, a couple of students who did internships uh, with us last year, to hear them talk about the difference that those experiences make and how those experiences are different from what they experience in a traditional classroom mm -hmm. uh, is, is very enlightening and makes me realize just the importance of um, starting with the learner and really listening to their voice and helping them shape the kind of education that they're going to experience. Yeah. Wow. And I'll just extend that idea to if we want to do that, we have to create really strong relationships with our learners and we have to get to know our learners and their interests and passions and learning styles. Um, and certainly a theme that we've seen throughout these podcasts and shift your paradigm has, has been the strong connection between the mentor, the coach, the teacher, the advisor, you know, whatever sort of terminology they're using for a teacher and the and the learner. So interest profiles, um, ongoing conversations, um, meaningful connections that take time and energy to, to nurture and, and foster um, so that you can design learning experiences that um, meet each student's interests and passions and allow for them to offer that choice and voice that Randy's talking about through agency. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Well, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing more of both of the podcasts and uh, checking out the bonus episodes and, and all the other uh, guests that you're going to have and the other topics that you guys are going to cover as you continue your journey, especially on the uh, paradigm shift arena, but also with your TNL, with your TL talk. Um, 
I think it's going to be very, very cool. So um, I'm going to shift the conversation over to FETC, since that, that's where we first connected, um, sat down and, and visited uh, about what you guys have going on. So what's, what's, what does FETC 2019 look like for you guys? So um, at FETC 2018, I was a featured presenter and mm-hmm. I'm to be invited back again. Um, the sessions that I'll be sharing are a variety of things, but they all have that learner-centered theme to them. So um, looking at designing ed tech through the different paradigms, looking at the traditional school-centered paradigm, and then what might ed tech look through a learner-centered paradigm. So that'll be a workshop. And then um, there's another workshop that focuses on the learner and looking specifically at Generation Z. Uh, Who are our learners? How can we, um, how do they use technology and how can we design learning experiences that leverage the technology in the ways that they want to and how is their voice involved in that? Um, And then specifically uh, presentations, short presentations on learner agency, uh, referenced that earlier and the Mm -hmm. value of that. Um, personalized learning, I think, especially in the ed tech arena, that um, is a hot topic, but it also goes beyond just technology. Personalization isn't necessarily just putting a learner in front of a computer. Um, right. it's, there's a whole lot uh, more depth to it than that. So we'll be exploring that. And then um, another session on looking at the future. This was something that was pretty popular last year. And looking at things like augmented reality, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, et cetera, how does that come into the uh, realm of education and how should we be thinking about that from a leadership perspective in terms of um, the kinds of environments and experiences that we create for learners to be successful when they're going to leave us and they're going to be out in this world rich in technology and you know have to make ethical decisions and um, goes back to that agency piece too. be, you know, managing themselves and knowing uh, how to use things for good uh, and not necessarily uh, in, in other ways. Right. <laughs> well, so I uh, look forward to uh, FETC again this year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I, I, at least from, from my listening to everything that we've talked about today, I, I think the, those sessions tie beautifully into – leaders looking at what they need to do for their students. Um, and it ties really beautifully into the entire paradigm shift where it's learner centered. I mean, everything you mentioned ties directly to the learner being at the center of the education. Uh, so I think it's going to be a beautiful, from my perspective, I think it's a beautiful way to tie all of that together as you guys move forward. That, that's going to be really cool. Looking forward to uh, hopefully being able to catch some of your sessions when we're at FETC and definitely encourage anyone out there listening to check out the uh, sessions at FETC for sure. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, before we uh, take off, how can folks reach out and get more information from you? All the, let's have all the websites, all the Twitters, all the Facebooks, whatever you got. (laughs) All right. So we obviously have the two podcast shows, tltalkradio.org and shiftyourparadigm.org. Um, Twitter handle is a bit odd, but it's at Z I E G E R A N. I don't know how you say that, but it's just my Ziggeran. I say Ziggeran. Ziggeran. Okay. Work. <laughs> uh, and, and blog and write at working at the edge.org. And I'll add my Twitter handle. It's at L Funi Hutton. L F U I N I H E T T E M. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. And uh, we definitely look forward to uh, catching up with your podcasts and seeing you guys at FETC. And maybe we'll get a chance to sit down and, and visit again this year like we did last year. And, and one closing thing. Uh oh. One more thing. So, the thing that really makes all this stuff possible is having a collaborator and being mm. able to work with a partner. And I'm sure you could probably attest to yes, the same thing. Yes, very much it would so. It's really hard to do all this stuff with just one person. Yeah. But because we can evenly distribute things and we each have our strengths and our things that we can run ahead with, uh, it really makes all this stuff possible. So you mentioned two podcasts. That's how it happens because (laughs) um, that each of us brings certain something to the table. So encourage your listeners, find a collaborator. Uh, It can be a really powerful learning experience and, and really up your learning game. And we have a podcast on that. Hey, there's an episode just for you. That's right. Working together. 
interest in our work. We really appreciate that and um, value the time that you took to share our work with your listeners today. Oh, absolutely. I thank you guys again for taking the time out of what has got to be a crazy second day of school. So all the best for the rest of the school year. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye. Hi there, I'm Jerry Prince with EAST with this week's EAST Update. Never underestimate the power of persuasion, regardless of age, ability, or otherwise. Our update this week features an EAST student that recently shared an elementary school experience. Ian's sister was in an EAST program at the Hot Springs High School. Ian was always hearing about how great EAST was, but he was years away from having that opportunity. So he did what any elementary student would do, gathered a group of friends, headed to the foreign lands of the Hot Springs Middle School, straight to the principal's office. And so we went in and we talked to our principal and we were like, hello, we would like an East program at the middle school. And she goes, well, the middle school has been trying for uh, years now, but they've never actually been able to accomplish this goal. Well, we're being children. <laughs> we were not keen on waiting around, and we were like, "All right, how do we how do we jumpstart this? Who do we talk to?" And I talked to my sister and the East facilitator at the high school, and they said, "Oh, uh, you got to talk to Matt Dozier, the CEO of the East uh, Initiative." And that meeting resulted in these students accepting the challenge of pitching their middle school as a prime candidate for a state grant in order to get an East program. Uh, so me and Jackson and David spent uh, many afternoons, not at recess playing with the other kids, but in the library on computers, these really uh, old <laughs> trashy computers working on Microsoft PowerPoint, trying to put together a presentation that we could show to the CEO of East and the East board and say, hey, we're really interested in what you got um, going on. We would like you guys to put a program in our middle school. We think we can benefit you and you can benefit us um, substantially. Ian recalled meeting the East Board and the accolades received for their job of pitching their middle school as a great investment. And a short time later, they were called back to the principal's office. We were sitting in class one day and the intercom goes off and goes, hey, I need Ian Burr, Jackson Ratcliffe, and David Bartlett to the office. And we walk in, they're like, oh, go right to the principal. And we're, we all sit in her chairs and she looks at us with this like really sad expression and this really sad tone in her voice. And she goes, guys, um, and oh my, at that time, like, I just felt my heart sink. And I was, I was really disappointed. I was like, we didn't get it. Uh, man, and she goes, we got it. And she showed us a text from the principal at the middle school. Uh, East had accepted and uh, gave, us, gave the middle school a grant to get all the technology we needed. And I think that was probably the most excited um, I'd ever been at, especially at a at school, and uh, probably the highlight of my elementary years. So here is one of the secrets to the success of EAST, students. Students are a powerful ambassador to whatever cause they believe in. Get your students on board. Give them the microphone and the spotlight. Special thanks to Ian from the Hot Springs School District for sharing some of his early experiences that have indeed been a great investment for all involved. If you'd like to know more about the EAST initiative, please visit eastinitiative.org or just search for East Initiative on social media. Our music today comes from the East Archive, going all the way back to 2012, with a track from Kevin from Springdale High School. With the East Update, I'm Jerry Prince. Thanks for listening. Hey, thank you so much to uh, Jerry for providing us with the uh, East Initiative update and uh, definitely want to thank uh, Randy and Lynn for uh, dropping by and uh, they have a lot of stuff going on at FETC uh, as you heard in the interview and hopefully we'll be able to catch up with them and sit down and uh, we enjoyed talking with uh, Randy back last year's FETC conference so uh, it'll be it'll be really cool if we can catch up with them this year. You know that's what's scaring me is that we're interviewing all these people doing sessions and we're doing sessions and I think their sessions are going to be better than my session. No, it's like every time I'm like, I got to bulk up my session. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, we'll be giving away Apple watches at our session to every person that chose. No, I'm just kidding. I was going to say. You know, there it is. Our I, session is terrible, but everyone left with an Apple watch and they, and they say, that was the best session I've ever actually, actually, it's just the skin of a gala apple that you wrap around your wrist. I, yeah. yeah, it's an or apple. gala. I don't know how you say that. Yeah. 
We're going to give everyone an Apple Watch. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right. That's like that or radio. give them an Apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's like that radio station that gave away a Toyota. Yeah. And it was the Toy Yoda. A Toyota. <laughs> but the way they presented it, it was like you were winning a car. So that's true. They and actually I, got sued for that. Did they really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the way they did the the way they did that, the whole they still uh, made it thing, they made like it sound car. like it was going to be this car. Well, we're going to give away an Apple. Watch us do it. <laughs> So you get it one shiny red apple. Everybody's getting a no. Heck, I'll bring some Granny Smiths in there. All right, you can have your choice. That's ah. right. Make your own apple pie. <laughs> hey, listen, it's been a great show. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to check us out on the web at edgetechguys.com. Um, hey, I'm Jeff Madlock. I'm David Henderson. We'll catch you next time. You've been listening to Edutech Guys Radio. Radio.edutechguys.com. The opinions expressed on this site is programmed to those of participants and not intended to and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of any specific educational entity, sponsor, company, state, or government agency.